Okay, this is part two of section 8.1, where we're asked to understand logarithms. Last day we learned that logarithms are really just exponents. And recall how equations in exponential form could also be written in logarithmic form. Hopefully remember x equals c to the power of y. That's the same thing as y equals to log base c or base c log of x. Okay? And vice versa. So we're going to use that and try some different, more different and maybe a little bit more difficult log questions. So example 1a, I've got base 6 of a log of x equals to negative 2. And I want us to solve for x. Now notice x is no longer the exponent, so I'm still going to ask you to rewrite in exponential form. So the base is 6, exponent negative 2, and the number is x. Well, what's 6 to the power of negative 2? Remember, negative exponents is the same thing as 1 divided by 6 to the power of positive 2. And 6 to the power of 2 is just 36. So here you go. x equals to 1 over 36. Done. Part B now, notice the base is my variable, so I guess it's x, and the 2 is my exponent, so x squared equals to 81. So in all these cases, once again, I'm still going to ask you to change it into exponential form. Notice then that if I solve for this, I get x equals to actually plus or minus 9, but because we have restrictions, remember our restrictions up here, our constant c for our base has to be bigger than 0, so therefore x equals to 9 only, okay? x cannot equal negative 9 because the constant must be greater than 0, okay? All right, you go ahead and try c and d then, all right? I'm back. Try log base 27x equals 2 thirds. So in this case, kind of like a, I'm just going to rewrite this as the base is 27, the exponent's 2 thirds, and that equals to x. Remember, exponentials of fractions can be written as roots. This would be the cube root of 27, but then we have to square it. So the cube root of 27 is just 3. 3 squared, of course, gives us 9. There you have it. And the last one here, D, looks a little bit more scary, but once again, I'm going to ask you to try to isolate log by itself. So to do that, I think the first step would be to, yeah, divide both sides by 3. So log base x, 9, equals to 2 thirds. And this one's now like B, so I'm going to get you to try it, and let's see if you can solve it. x to the power 2 thirds equals to 9. Notice I want x by itself. <clears throat> I want x to the power of 1. So note, I guess, in this case, to get to 1, 2 thirds times what number gives you 1? Probably 3 halves, yeah. So therefore, I'm going to actually ask you to raise both sides to the power of 3 halves. So notice on the left side here, the x to the power of 2 thirds times 3 halves. We multiply exponents like that, that just becomes 1. And then now we have 9 to the power of 3 halves. And of course, we have to rewrite that as root 9, all raised to the power of 3. <clears throat> so that's 3 cubed, or 27. There you go. That's it. So hopefully this wasn't too much more than last time. It is a little bit different, but nonetheless, same kind of idea. Change from logarithmic form to exponential form to solve. Now, since our number system is based on powers of 10, logarithms with base 10 are widely used and have a special name. They are actually called common logarithms. And base 10 logarithms were a very convenient base, so tables of base 10 logs were drawn up and used for computation. These are the tables that are now stored in your calculator. So if you bring out your calculator, and you have this log key, 
whenever I ask you to type in log, let's say 15, you're asking for log 15, which the base is equal to 10. So it's always base 10. So think about log base 10 of the number 10. So what exponent for 10 to the power of something gives you 10? Should be 1. So here we go. Log, let's say 100. What do you think that's going to be? 10 to the power of what gives you 100? Well, that should be 2. Right? So these are all base 10 logarithms. Okay. So <clears throat> the log key is the one that com computes base 10 logarithms only. And it's traditional not to write the 10 to indicate base 10. So log base 10 of 100 is more commonly written as just log 100. If there is no base there, you assume it's always base 10. So here we have to evaluate log 123 with your calculator. And of course, this is base 10 log of 123. Uh, it is read the log of 123. And so all you need to do is just go to your calculator and then just press the buttons. Press the log button, and then one, two, three. So let's try that. Log one, two, three. Now notice the log 100 is two. <clears throat> so this number should be a little bit more than two. It won't be more than three, I don't think, because 10 to the power of three is a thousand. So this should be, oh yeah, 2.0899, okay? So this is just 2.0899, da, 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 da. All right, that's it. Just want to make sure you know how to use your calculator. All right, let's turn the page. <clears throat> and now, without using your calculator, can you tell me between which two consecutive whole numbers does log 1, 2, 3, 4 lie on the number line? So we'll use a calculator in a second, but remember, log 1, 2, 3, 4 is the same thing as log base 10, 1, 2, 3, 4. And if I call this number x and I ask you to change into exponential form, you would get 10 to the power of x equals to 1, 2, 3, 4. Well, 10 to the power of what gives you 1, 2, 3, 4? Well, this is where you're going to have to know your exponents. 10 to the power of 3 is 1,000. Oops, too many zeros. And I think if I were to go one unit higher, 10 to the power of 4, that's 10,000. So it looks like 1, 2, 3, 4 is between 10,000 and 1,000. So... Uh, log 1, 2, 3, 4, remember, this is just an exponent, so it must lie between the numbers, between 3, ah, not betweens, between, between what, 3 and 4. And to double check that, let's bring out the calculator log 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh yeah, it's definitely between 3 and 4. Okay. We're going to end today's video with just a quick example using logs. Don't know if you know, but the whole idea of the Richter scale and earthquakes, yeah, it actually uses logarithms. So let's take a look at how it is done. Example number three here says the Richter scale is used to measure the magnitude of earthquakes. And the Richter magnitude, which is capital M of an earthquake, is defined as following. It's M equals to the log of some ratio of A divided by AO, where A is really the amplitude of the ground motion, usually in microns, and it's measured by usually a seismometer. And A0 or A0, that's the amplitude corrected for the distance to the actual earthquake, and that would be expected for some sort of standard earthquake. So it's measured from some sort of standard. Okay, so here in my first example is this. If an earthquake had an amplitude that was 10 to the power of 5.2 times of the A0 or A0, which is that initial standard earthquake um, amplitude, what would be the earthquake's magnitude on the Richter scale? So you're looking for the magnitude, which is M. So I'm just going to ask you to use the formula M is log. And A here is 10.52, or 10 to the power of 5.2 times A0. And of course, A0 is just there. So notice the A0s or A0s cancel out. So you're just left with log 10 to the power of 5.2. Remember how if there's no base here, this actually means base 10. 
and remember how last day when we talked about this, if we have, and I'll write the note over here, this is from last day, I think, log base c, c to the power x, that just equals to, yeah, x. Well, in this case, then, this just equals to 5.2. So the Richter scale reading, the earthquake had a magnitude of 5.2. All right, there's an earthquake in Japan. Don't know if you remember that one. It was measured 8.2 on the Richter scale. That's huge, right? So the question is, how many times as great as A0 was its amplitude? Well, to do that, we're going to take a look and figure out, I guess, the actual amplitude. So we'll use our formula again. M equals to log A over A0. M, in this case, is the number 8.2 equals to log a over a naught. Here we're going to have to kind of get rid of that log, so I'm going to change this now into exponential form. Change into exponential form. So remember, our base is 10, our exponent is 8.2, and the number must be just a over a no, a naught. If I were to continue further and try to solve for a, the amplitude by itself, I'm going to multiply both sides by a naught. And so the amplitude here seems to be 10 to the power of 8.2 times as big as the original a naught. So how many times as great as a naught was its amplitude? You can say its amplitude was... 10 to the power of 8.2 times as great. Now, what is 10 to the power of 8.2? Well, let's take a look. 10 to the power of 8.2. That's a gigantic number. Was that 158489? 318. 158. Oh, I forgot it. 489. 4. 8, 9, 3, 1, 9. So that's what? 158 million 489,319.2 times as great. That's why the earthquake was so, so powerful. Okay? And finally, a lot of times you're going to be asked to compare. So in this case, I'm saying compare the seismic shaking of the Japanese 2011 earthquake with that of the earthquake that struck Vancouver Island in 1946. And that earthquake actually had a Richter scale reading of 7.3. Okay, so 8.2 to 7.3. Determine how many more times as great in amplitude was the Japanese quake to the Vancouver Island quake. So I, let's just calculate the amplitude of each of those first. Okay, so we'll do Japan, we did. Okay, so the Japanese one we already did from before, right? The Japanese one... Japanese amplitude we found was 10 to the power of 8.2 times AO and this is from part B so we did that above so I guess now I have to do the same thing with the Vancouver Island one so M equals to log A over A naught it's 7.3 for M I'm doing this a little bit faster because we've done this before it's just the same as B you know, rewrite into exponential form. Change into exponential form. So 10 to the power of 7.3 equals a over a naught. Multiply both sides by a naught, and there we have it. So 10 to the power of 7.3 times a naught equals to a, its amplitude. So this is the Vancouver Island amplitude. And so it says determine how many times as great in amplitude was the Japanese quake to the Vancouver quake. So now you're doing some comparisons, right? So let's just compare. Comparing, we can set up a ratio. 
So we'll find the ratio of the Japanese one to Vancouver Island. And so the ratio would be Japan on top. So that would be 10 to the power 8.2 A0. And then Vancouver Island's on the bottom. 10 to the power 7.3 A0. Notice once again the a naughts cancel out. And we're left with 10 to the power 8.2 divided by 10 to the power 7.3. But of course, using our exponent rules, we can then subtract these exponents since we're doing division. And this is 10 to the power 0.9. So it's almost 10 times as big. How many times as big is it? So it's 10 to the power 0 0.9 times bigger. And if you actually wanted a number, that'd be 10 to the power of 0.9. And it's actually about 8 or 7.943. So, or approximately 7.943 times bigger. So, I'll say the Japan earthquake. The Japan earthquake was 7.943 times bigger than the Vancouver. Island earthquake. Okay, there's your first example using logs and word problems.